Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Ryan and Rush Show. On today's episode, West Virginia looks to make one step closer to March as Iowa State comes to town in a can't lose game for the Mountaineers. All ahead on the Ryan and Rush Show. And we welcome you back to your source for West Virginia sports. I'm Rambling Rush. He's Moneyline Mac. We are the Ryan and Rush Show, and we're getting right into it. Ryan, we had Ethan Bach on Monday on the show. Great show with him talking about the Oklahoma State win. This game coming up, the Iowa State game, and kind of where it all goes from here as we step one, as we go one step closer to March. Um, something we talked about on that show was this is the first time we are playing Iowa State this season. A really good Iowa State team, very defensively sound. Uh, and then the rest of the games here on out are, are second time uh, times we're playing in the round robin for the Big 12. So, Ryan, just right off the bat is, like I said, we know this is a defensively sound team. What can you tell us about this Iowa State team? Stop me if you heard this before. Another good defensive team in the Big 12. Yeah, Iowa State hangs their head on the defense end. And it's funny because under Fred Hoiberg, who T.J. Otzelberger worked under initially, they were an offensive-oriented team, but now they've shifted since Otzelberger took over just last year to more of a defense-oriented team. This is an elite defensive team. They switch a lot of stuff, and they're so disciplined with their switches. So it's going to be a hell of a test once again for the Mountaineers tonight. I think it's funny how normally we're known as the defensively sound team, and Iowa State's the scoring team, and I feel like there's been like this role reversal where like mm -hmm. our offense is generating more than it usually does. And you know, their defense is generating more. So it definitely it should make for an interesting matchup tonight, but how do we talk to me a little bit about their defense? What do they like to run? Um, how do you kind of see the Mountaineers lining up to their style of defense? So it, it, it's man to man, very physical too. They, uh, the, you, you drive the ball in the paint and they're going to, they do an unbelievable job of helping gang guarding, um, try and protect in that rim. They love to switch stuff so that they can deny and take you out of your offensive sets. They will occasionally go a little one, three, one as well. They did this in the past as well, um, where they'll put their, uh, guy Kuntz at the top, uh, at the top of, uh, the one, three, one zone to give him some length. He was a transfer from Washington state. So, but primarily just a physical defensive team that likes to switch stuff. If you keep the ball on the side of the floor, kind of like Texas and Texas Tech like to, like to do, it's uh, you're going to have your issues. You, you want to keep the ball in the middle of the floor so that they can't basically bottle you up and make you play two on five, three on five, which is what they want to do. Yeah, I think it's 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 interesting, right? We've talked about a lot of like the keys to victory, how you know West Virginia wins. Two things keep coming up, and it all has to do with staying disciplined, right? And how we've lost a couple of games, especially earlier in the Big Twelve schedule with with turnovers and free throws, right? And we know this, you know, being a defensively sound team, but you know they're forcing around eighteen turnovers a game, mm -hmm. so that's something where our defense even needs to step up. I, I think to win this game, we definitely need to win the turnover battle. I agreed, and you know. They don't have the best individual on ball defenders like a Javon Carter. Like when we were elite defensively, we had elite guys defensively, whether it's JC at the front or Sags in the back. They got guys that are really bought into what Otzelberger's preaching help defense. And they're always on the white line, as Hugs likes to say. And a guy like Caleb Grill, um, who kind of started his career at Iowa State, transferred to UNLV where Otzelberger was before Iowa State, before Otzelberger got the job back and brought him back. This guy was never a defender. He never even thought of playing defense. But now he's one of the best help defenders in the league. He's running through balls. He's taking charges. He's battling uh, big guys on the on the glass. I saw him fight off uh, one of the Kansas bigs for a rebound the other day. I'm like, that's a that's a sharp shooter. Like You're thinking of like a Sean McNeil or Eric Stevenson mm -hmm. fighting off a, a big man. And this guy, I mean, hats off to him for buying in and just putting putting the team above himself and, and buying into winning basketball. Taking a kind of a transition over from, from defense over to the offensive side of the ball for Iowa State. And I think it's, uh, you know, I think we used to do this to the Mountaineers. They kind of make their their best offense is their defense, right? As well as a New England Patriots fan. I saw it all this past season for the fo football um, version of that. But how, what, what are they going to try to do on offense to compensate for their defense. 
So Frank Martin used to always use this term. You want to marry your offense with your defense. So I thought when we were press Virginia, we did so because we would like to play fast and we would run some quick stuff, uh, some secondary stuff. They do. They marry their offense with their defense. They want to grind you in the half court and they do that in the, in the, on the offensive side as well with their motion offense. And it's, it's not really complicated other than it's just constant movement. It's a lot of swinging the ball side to side back cuts, guys lifting out of the corner and if you fall asleep they'll make you pay and that's just what they do they want to bore you to death kind of like it's not as slow as virginia like everybody thinks of like the tony bennett pack line and, mm-hmm. and that kind of ultimate slow style of play but they are one of the slower teams in the big 12 and they just are just a really well coached team and very disciplined team so this strikes me as a team that's just great at just game management right is they want to yes. they want to grind you out on defense and then slow you down on your defense while they're playing offense. So my guess is uh, West Virginia really is going to want to kind of speed up this game, not be speeded up to the point of, you know, where we lose our mind and it becomes, you know, like butters on the ball and, you know, the ball's going all over the place, but enough where, you know, you don't let them get set up, you know, take advantage of, of in transition um, and, and really, you know, counter that, that defense by, you know, wearing them out, making them tired. So, it's it's going to make for an interesting game tonight. It's like we were talking about. Is this kind of the role reversals? We're not used to seeing them on this side, and we're not used to being on this side. And for last year, this was kind of the game. Um, I know there's a lot of comparisons from you know last year's team to this year's team, and not kind of falling into that same realm. And I think the Mountaineers have done an excellent job of that this season, especially where they're ranked and overcoming things. But hey, this was a game. This was one of the games the last year's team won. Um, and as we talk about kind of being one step closer to March and winning your home games, this. This game is crucial. This is another I, – I, the Oklahoma State was a must win, I feel like, but I think this is a can't-lose game. Yeah, we need to find a way to get this one because the schedule gets really, really hard. And go check out our episode with Ethan Bach where we dove into the path. And like, like you said, this is a disciplined team where – a veteran team – where we're, we're going to need to start this game fast too, because they are one of the better teams with the lead. They they do a good job, like you said, of being disciplined. They let more teams lose the game than they win the game. They that's their kind of mentality, their mo and and aims. Just discipline. I, yep. and, hey, I think that's uh, why they advanced last year in the tournament too, is they played an undisciplined LSU team and just grinded them out. And then Wisconsin had some injuries in the round of 32, and then they kind of just outgrinded them. And it's it, it's another team come March that I think definitely can advance because this is a unique brand of basketball and unique style. Well, I think it's the same with us we keep talking about, right? If we yep. can just make it out of the Big 12 into that tournament, who's saying, like, I think the Sweet 16 at a, at a minimum, you know, kind of get other blood from other conferences. We saw it with Auburn and just yep. how much of a grind this league is. So, no, I'm with you there. I think I think you know we keep talking about get out of the Big Twelve and make that same type of run for the Mountaineers um, coming up in March. So uh, Ryan, for this game, um, especially with how good their defense is, you know we're going to really want to penetrate that. Um, you know, really kind of game manage ourselves in a way. Who do you believe is the person to do that? Who is the X factor for this game? You know, that's a great question as well. I, I would say probably this this game. They're gonna do. They're gonna key in on Eric Stevenson. They're, mm-hmm. He's at the top of the scouting report. They're not just gonna let him walk into shots like Oklahoma did. So I think the others, the guys off the yep. bench, the the second unit is really gonna be an. Act. We're gonna need something because we are a deeper team than Iowa State. So the Seth Wilsons, um, James Cook has got to come up big. For us again, so. Yeah. Yep. Tucson. Uh, this is where jo- Seth Wilson had its best game as a freshman last year. I think he's the X factor here tonight as well. I like it. I'm going to throw something yeah. out there, uh, especially with, you know, how Eric Stevenson's been doing, catching on fire, playing well at home. This something tells me about Trey Mitchell that that rely hit yeah. on him big game, really grind it out, you know, take shots from different, go under, spread them out because, um, you know, we'll want good shots and, and to wear them out on defense. Like you said, I mean, we're, we're deeper than them, so we got to we got to come at them with defense. Um, what are the good old where that part of the episode, Ryan, the, the Ryan McIntyre, the Moneyline Mac. Three keys to victory for the West Virginia Mountaineers to be one step closer to March. Yeah, the first one, and you already gave it out. We got to value the ball. They're they're Mm -hmm. forced at 18 turnovers a game. If you're sloppy with the ball, 
they're going to run through it and they're going to have a field day in transition and they can get some easy ones. So if we value the basketball may and set our defense, definitely that's key keys to victory. Number one, I would say keys to victory. Number two is you got to be able to be disciplined on the defensive side of things because Iowa state offensively, we keep talking about their discipline. They got guys that buy into their roles. They know who the shooters are. They know who the screeners are. Caleb Grill, you can't lose him because if he gets going, he can make one or two, and next thing you know, he's made five or six. Jaron Holmes and Gabe uh, Kalsher as well are shooters, and uh, their point guard, Lipsy, is not a shooter. So identifying who's a shooter and who's not and staying disciplined to the scouting report. And last but not least, man, uh, wear them down with our, our depth, our length, and uh, find a way to win this game out playing for 40 minutes. I love it. I love it. Another uh, must win slash can't lose game. Yeah. Going to be a big one. We'll call Seam. Hopefully he's <laughs> going to be packed tonight. Uh, hey, if you find us there, come say hi to us. Love love interacting with everyone when we go to go to the games. We'll we'll be there tonight and uh, just love you all. One step closer to March. Let's get it tonight and uh, keep the Coliseum loud and and go Mountaineers. Go Mountaineers.